What up, people? Coach V. New Breed Boxing. Man, oh man, this is probably going to be one of the most important, most informative, and best videos I've ever made to advise people on how to start their kids off in the sport of boxing. Be forewarned, I'm definitely going to hurt some feelings, but I'm not really here to make any friends. I'd rather tell a boring truth than a fabulous lie. So here we go. In the sport of boxing, in today's day and age, the fastest rising trend, or should I say epidemic, are these father-son relationships where the father has no background in the sport of boxing, sees the opportunity in their son to be great, and doesn't know when to back off and step to the side. Furthermore, these guys are basically pimping their kids off. They're more like scumbag manage, uh, promoters than they are fathers that once they reach a certain level of success, most of them. And to be honest with you, there are a couple of cases where I feel that father and son relationships do work pretty well. Like, I think Danny Garcia and his father have a great relationship, although I do feel that Danny has outgrown his father's expertise and he needs somebody more educated in the, in the actual sport of boxing and he should just keep his dad around for motivation and support. That's cool, they get along great. They're having a blast. I think that's a successful combination. Um, back uh, a little while ago, Robert Guerrero and his dad, you know, same thing. I think they have the same kind of relationship. But again, the father has been, you know, he, he, he's already exhausted his knowledge. He only knows so much, you know what I'm saying? So at this point, he's only there for moral support. When you're coaching somebody, you got moral support and you got technical advice, but you need both. A pep talk ain't gonna walk everybody through every situation. Sometimes you gotta tell somebody specifically what to do to win in a fight. And this past two weekends, we've seen two horrible examples of fathers that don't know when to step to the side and let an expert take over to take their kids to the next level because they're letting their ego suffocate the growth of their child, AKA their fighter, and not allowing them to flourish and get to the next level because they want to be seen standing next to them. You know what I mean? It's almost like these guys that, you know, they, they, they throw the mitts on for two seconds when the cameras come around because maybe they're cool with a fighter or something. And then, they, you know, they're acting like they're taking credit for their whole career. It's like, come on, dude. It's obvious. We see, we see what's going on in between rounds. Tiafimo Lopez this weekend, he had zero, zero help in his corner. He's getting contradictory advice. He's getting misinformation. And I like Tia Fimo a lot. And I think he has a tremendous amount of talent. And regardless, he's basically fighting. He's, co he's coaching himself, in my opinion, at this point. You know what I mean? Like his dad, you know what I'm saying? Maybe he's there forever, but I don't think he's knowledgeable enough in the sport to take him as far as he can go. I think he's limiting himself and he's basically hit the ceiling. And if he doesn't get some better people around him, he's not gonna grow. Sean Porter. Sean Porter is the same situation. I mean, he's already towards the end of his career, but Sean Porter, he's lucky he made it as far as he has with, with his father because his father's basically still in the limelight. His father's over here trying to be the star of the show. When he was never a fighter, he has no experience. He's never trained anybody else. His son is exceptionally talented. He goes into a fight with the pound for pound best fighter in the world, in my opinion. And he had the plan preemptively to take his son out of the fight by stopping the fight. He was prepared to throw in the towel before he went in there. What do they tell you in, in the art of war? You win first, then you go to war. If you step onto the battlefield with defeat already in your mind, your fate is, is already sealed. You're not winning, bro. You're going to get smashed. Even if you start off doing good, at some point that shit's going to take over and you're going to lay down if things get rough. And when you got a corner that you're coming to, when you go back to your corner, you should be going there for technical advice and inspiration, motivation, whatever, whatever is necessary. But inspiration, motivation, however you want to call it, is only going to take you so far. You got to get technical advice as to what you're doing wrong and how to adjust and adapt your tactics and strategy to prevail. You understand what I'm saying? Like, if you got some guy that's just giving you a fucking pep talk when you're getting your ass kicked, and furthermore, he's got this mindset that, like, like Danny Garcia, I'm um, no, not Danny Garcia, Tia Filmo, his dad was like, come on, man, we got a party to go to after this. Like, 
Bro, you're thinking about the fucking party? This kid's over here with his face getting rearranged. Having a fight that he didn't anticipate to be this tough. So you already know he's going through it. Mentally, he's already like devastated. And then on top of that, your mind is somewhere completely in another dimension. Like you're not even in the zone, in the here and the now, providing the most service to your son. Like it's, it's just crazy to me, bro. Between Tia Filmo and uh, Sean Porter this past two weeks, bro, I think they should ban fathers from the sport of boxing the way this shit's looking. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm being a little extreme. Because again, there's been examples um, of father-son relationships that definitely did work. But even still, you know what I mean? I just feel like sometimes, you know, these fathers are just too consumed with being seen and being, even listen to the way they talk. Sometimes it really bothers me. Sometimes I hear them, like the two I just mentioned and, and the other, some of the other fathers that, that um, I can think of in history. Like they say when I fought him or when I should have did this or I should have did that. Bro, are you like confusing yourself with your son? Like you're working the corner, you're not in the ring. This guy's blowing my mind, man. You know what I mean? So they, they just want to do all the talk and they want to be the star of the show. I just think that's bad energy. It's bad for business. Um, again, now, if you come from a boxing background and you've been around the sport long enough to where you've been around different levels and you have a thorough understanding or at the very least, you've been studying this shit your whole life and you've been doing your homework. You watch every fight. You study the rule books, amateur and professional. You go to all the fights. You hang out with the referees, the, the judges, the officials. You pick their brains. You talk to other coaches. You in the game like that, then that's a different story. Then maybe you are the exception to the rule. I always use custom model. He was never a world championship fighter. I don't even think he ever was even a fighter. But I think he was one of the best coaches ever because he was completely absorbed and consumed and married to the sport of boxing. He wasn't looking at his kid like a fucking meal ticket. He, matter of fact, he selflessly dedicated his life to the sport and never even negotiated any financial contracts to get any reciprocation from his fighters. He would just take them to their ultimate potential out of the passion and love for the sport, which I think today is not really feasible because just you know the way the world works right now, money is just more important than it ever was. But still, whoever does coach your, your son or whatever, make sure it's somebody who really has a passion for the sport, that really loves the sport of boxing, first and foremost. And they're not looking at the kid as a meal ticket. Because the, like I always say, you never fight for money. If you, if you perform on a certain level, more money than you ever imagined will come to you eventually. But never fight for the money, you know? So that's just my take on it. Overall, to be honest with you, again, unless the father is coming from a heavy boxing background or he's really willing to dedicate his whole life to investigating every in and out of the sport from A to Z, you can maybe start him out or you can be there in the corner or you can stand side by side along with another more experienced coach, maybe until you get to the point where you can actually hold it down on your own because it's a long journey. So, you know, you could learn on the job. It is, you know, it is possible. But to just step in and take control of a situation when you know fucking nothing about the actual sport and how to, you know, how to aim somebody's career and how to guide them the right way and how to pick their fights and how to train and, you know, there's just a multitude of bad things that can come from an inexperienced coach taking over a guy's career just out of ego and because the kid doesn't know any better. And the worst part is it's your father, so you really don't have any say so. He might just beat your ass every time you go home and it's like, yeah, I guess he's my coach. It's like, it's like slavery, you know what I mean? So in my opinion, it's a bad idea. Respect the people that are actually professionals or the people that are just more knowledgeable than you. Let them steer the career until maybe you are capable enough to you know, take the helm. But if that's not the case, man, put it in the hands of the professionals. Leave it to the coaches that really love the sport, that really do this all day and night. Anyway, that's just my personal take on it. Hope you found this informative. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Go check out my Instagram, coach.v underscore. Till the next time, we out here. Out.